Your radio waves are secure. No need to panic. Decepticons are definitely not listening to your every move. Your hosts will be with you shortly with the perfect example of why you should never be an Autobot. We will see if Onyx, Computron, and Kilobyte can manage to retain your attention long enough as they continue to produce meaningless content. Speaking of which, time to tune in. Hello and welcome to Season 3 of the podcast, where we are currently recapping the events of Transformers IDW 2005 Continuity Phase 3 this time. Woo! You guys ready? That was quick. (laughs) That was quick. (laughs) It was. This is a quick little short break. I'm Onyx Prime with my two co-hosts here. Hi, I'm Computron. Hi, I'm Kilobyte. Hi folks, this is Onyx Prime from the future. Thank you all so much for entering in the giveaway. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. Now, for the winner, after gathering up all the entries and putting them into a random select generator, I can now finally announce the winner of the art raffle. Congratulations, VR Matrix. We'll be contacting you shortly on what you will like your free art bus to be. And for all of you out there still listening, don't worry, we will have more giveaways soon. Again, thank you so much for participating. All right, let's get back to the review. Moving on with our comic discussion for today's episode takes us to IDW, Transformers, Titans Return. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, we highly recommend you go back, read it, and then come listen to the podcast. Now, onwards. Same deal as before. Computron, do you mind giving us some fun facts? Yeah, uh, time for the hard stuff. So, facts and trivia. So for the number of comics, we have five, which includes the Titan Return one shot and then the Transformers issue 56 and 57 and issue more than meets the eye 56 and 57. Ooh, 56 and 57. Yeah, it's in a theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first comic was released July 27th, 2016. And the last being more than meets the eye 57 was released September 28th that same year. The writer was Mar- Marguerite Scott. James Roberts and John Barber, with artists by Livia Ramondelli and pencils by Priscilla Tramontano, might pronounce that wrong, and colors by Joanna Lafuente. All right, so for trivia. In the last Autobot issue, Sentinel still has the body designed he died in, but is wearing a new set of modular black armor over the top. This thematically incorporates the funeral black color scheme he adopted in Megatron Origins number three, uh, and the concept of his Apex armor from issue four. Rather than the tank mode he sported in Megatron Origins, however, he is seen transforming into a train mode of his new Titan Returns toy, again, surrounded by black armor. All right, so next one. These comics are the first part of the IDW's multi-series tie-in to the Titan Return toy line. Obviously, in issue 56 of More Than Meets the Eye, the tie in that is, when Prowl describes Sentinel Prime's attack on the Decepticon ghetto to Fort Max, the accompanying visual inaccurately depicts Sentinel with his normal robot mode appearance, sans the additional black armor he was wearing during it. In More Than Meets the Eye, issue 57, Prowl has been a wanted fugitive since before the Sins of the Wreckers series. Yet, he's somehow able to return Sovereign to Earth, then return himself back to Luna 1 for a sabbatical. And not only does no one remark on the situation, Prowl isn't rearrested. Dun, dun, yeah, dun. that was kind of weird. A try. A little bit weird there. So that's about it. So, Mr. Kilai, do you mind giving us a short summary of these comics? Will do. A face from the past returns to Cybertron and does not like what the planet has become. Sentinel Prime's objective on Earth is revealed when he targets Garrison Blackrock and uncovers his true powers. That human bot Titan Master is popular. (laughs) He he seems to be the plot uh, loophole for most things now. Right, right. (laughs) He's the gimmick. But Optimus Prime and Sandwave find themselves a captive audience of Sentinel Prime in the shadow of Prion. 
Sentinel Prime arrives on Luna 1 to raise a Titan army. And meanwhile, Red Alert struggles to overcome Sentinel Prime's brainwashing, Fortress Maximus finds a new way to live up to his name in order to stop Sentinel's fleet of reanimated Titans. That was so much fun. And as always, this information has been taken from the wiki. Fantastic. Are you all ready to dive into these comics? I'm ready. Yes. I would go head first. Head first. I see what you get there. <laughs> we get some flashback scenes on the Lost Light before the events of More Meets Eye Volume 10, where we see Movie Night and Megatron trying to think of a reason not to come. Where the movie is a documentary about the defeat of Sentinel Prime. You know, the, the first Prime Megatron took out before Zeta. And oh, you know, we find out, you know, one of them. He's got quite the list now. And we find <laughs> out the Sentinel Prime was something of a purist and thought the Autobots were better than anything in the universe. Uh, scary. Glad he's dead, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Hugh flipping to present day on Cybertron, and Ironhide finds an even older relic than himself. Wow. Wow. Sentinel Prime stands over a massacre after slaughtering Decepticons of Kaon, and he is not happy with the Autobots hanging out with the Decepticons. Thoughts on this encounter. The art is very beautiful and very vibrant and I enjoy it. And I enjoy that the Kimian spark bleeds a different color due to their spark fre frequency being lower. That was a nice little, uh, a nice little thing that one thing I want to talk about, and this is completely off topic of everything you just said, because that's who I am, I guess. In the, one of the scenes that we saw, I think it's on page 14, we see uh, the ship that RC Soundwave in Optimus are arriving on to, I think, the Titan. Yeah, to Earth. Yeah. Yeah, to Earth. And does that, doesn't that look like the Star Lord ship from the Marvel movie uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? It, it kind of does, doesn't it? It kind of, yeah. Has a little bit of <laughs> similarities. Hmm. Anyway, back to the same year <laughs> that <Weird>. Ana was talking <laughs> about. <laughs> so I think it was kind of funny for Megatron to kind of. Feel like he's in this and being a like this is like a roast like a megatron roast the roast of megatron and like yes. i think one of the things is i think world leans in he's like hey reality check the whole thing isn't about you and the world doesn't revolve around you some of us actually enjoyed watching sentinel die <laughs> i was like oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> world's pretty good in this comic because he's he's also yeah. the one that invited megatron knowing what they were gonna watch as well yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> typical yeah. whirl what's your thoughts on the updated sentinel prime design because i like the vibrant colors the blacks the glowing blues i love the helmet love it yes yeah i don't support what he stands for but i do no, like how he looks not. <laughs> do not it's pretty cool for it. oh i see it's uh fascism i think it's we like page 20 that. where they kind of just say hey here's the showcase here's what sentinel prime is like and you're like whoa yeah <laughs> yeah I want However, a figure of that. The, the, the toy of Sentinel Prime from this um, Titan's Return figure looks almost nothing like it. It's completely orange wash. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> it's just pure, purely orange. <laughs> anyway, so after their little skirmish on Cybertron, Sentinel uses the space bridge and ends up back on Earth. And we get a surprise twist on how he lived. He's a Titan Master called Infinitus. Bump, bump. Bum, and he's after something. Hmm. What could it be? It's kind of cute when he could pops out. <laughs> I know, his little head. Pop! Reminds me of another special Titan Master. I used to so know. am I supposed to believe that throughout the entire course of Is 1 and Phase 2, Senno was just this splinter cell agent just gone off doing his own accord? Yes. It said he was like hiding in the shadows the whole time. You know, like all villains do. Like everything, yeah. Hiding. In the shadows. Yeah, he, yeah, he escaped and then he just was underneath Cybertron all along. Oh. Yeah. What were your thoughts, Kilo, uh, when we saw Skywarp has joined a little human group called the IGOs? GI Joes. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm like, this was a, a good way to introduce the GI Joes. Uh, especially with the revolution coming coming up, uh, so I thought it was a, a little bit 
like a way to ease it in and not just have it appear out of nowhere. So good. It's out of nowhere, but it's also connected to the humans we've seen already trying to interact with the Cybertronian resistance, not necessarily resistance, but with Optimus group trying to protect Earth. And so it was good that they just kind of appeared a little bit. It's not like they just appeared shooting at the Cybertronians. It's more of like they're still talking and see how they can deal with this. So that was pretty They've cool. They've been slowly introducing the G.I. Joes because I believe Marissa Fairborn is a G.I. Joe agent. But yeah. So, heads up, everyone, as Alpha Trion's head shows up next to Blackrock and Sentinel Prime kidnap, botnap, Blackrock? What were your thoughts, Computron? <laughs> did you guys catch when Blackrock was getting captured that he just did a little dab? Dab? You've been watching the YouTube, a, haven't you? He did a dab? <laughs> he did a dab. <laughs> like, when they're, so when they're in the back of the squad car and, like, they get pictured and uh, right before the squad car opens up, you know, the whole car was being rumbled and shaken and like as blackrock was being shaken he did like a, i don't know why the artist did this but they drew him dabbing yeah Page i think it's more of him more. falling i think it's yeah, more of yeah. him falling <laughs> yeah but it's like <laughs> you're watching a lot of earth culture yeah i have actually kind of fun uh it was really cool so here's where i like the artist the specific art style because as the squad car kind of gets, you know, taken over, kind of stopped, and they kind of, you know, are fighting Sentinel, they add a lot of fog to the comics. And, like, out of nowhere, I think it's, like, on page 46, you see Sentinel just, like, reach out of the fog, which is, like, really scary, kind of. Yeah, and, it's cool. Really yeah, cool. it was really, really good. And, like, reaches out, grabs uh, Blackrock and dips, and I'm like, whoa, that was kind of, I like what they did there. Like yeah. it, it almost yeah. reminds me of a like a certain movie with zombies and stuff. Yeah, just missed it probably. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do like the is there since Sentinel or Infinitus is a Titan Master. Uh, he does take over Alpha Trion's body. I do like their Titan Master head with their Alpha Trion's body. I think that's a cool design. But it's also scary because we also see his other body just fighting RC in the background yeah, by itself. And I'm like, what? I, Yo. You can control both? Yo, well, yes. yeah, I was going to ask our GM here real quick. Um, I didn't know I could do that as Zephyr. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things you didn't know how to do as Zephyr. Anyway, move oh. on. I just blew him up. I blew yeah, up. Yeah, you body. just kept going after <laughs> vendor bots. Anyway, go check out the D&D Transform and roll out. Anyway. Prowl <laughs> reappears and looks like they've stayed in contact with RC. Hmm, sneaky Prowl. Of but the most Always. important character in this comic, Computron, what happens to poor dear Soundwave in this one after the battle between Sentinel Prime, Optimus Prime, and I guess uh, Black Rock Alpha Trion? And, you know, there's an all out battle. What happens to Soundwave? I think this is going to be referenced later, but it appeared that... So, okay, so before that, we, we meet that uh, Blackrock is Sovereign. He's a Titan Master. Yep. Um, and Sovereign decides that he wants Alpha Trion's body. Well, during... So what happened was is the uh, Sentinel and Sovereign... Sorry, I don't want to say Alpha Trion. Bring Soundwave and Optimus. I think that's to Cybertron or a Graveyard? No, it's, a, it's a colony for the, the Micronus. Micro, yes, no, yes, yes. Micronus? Uh, yes. It was Micronus Prime, and this is where he abandoned his responsibilities. So yeah. what was cool here was that they were having an argument, and Sovereign, a.k.a. Blackrock, decides that he wasn't getting liking Soundwave's cut of his jib and decides to cut Soundwave's jib. Subway. What, what a word. Jib. <laughs> Describe what that means to me. Uh, he, so he decided that he was just going to hack and slash and s has this laser sword and just slashes sound wave like in a diagonal starting from his shoulder kind of down to his chest and then he pulls out. So he didn't like completely cut sound wave in half, but good enough. Gotcha. Yeah, but based on previous conversation, I thought this is where sound wave was dying and I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> nah, next page, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, page is fine. <laughs> So after the skirmish, uh, Sentinel Prime and Sovereign escape once more. And we now take our attention to Red Alert, who is busy with the details, the signs, the patterns, 
What are your thoughts of Cerebros, Red Alert, and Fort Max hanging out on this base in the middle of Luna 1? I really enjoyed it. Uh, again, the art for Alex Milne is amazing. Absolutely beautiful. These character designs. I When we get a little bit of flashback from Red Alert of what he's been going through and all the things that happened when he you know, put himself offline, jumped into the oil reservoir on, on the Lost Light. Uh, but when he took off his head, I'm like, is he a Titan Master? Because we've seen some Titan Master. I'm like, was he a Titan Master all along in this version? Uh, but then it seems like it, it isn't. And I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe uh, a reference to the toys. Could be a reference to the toy, yes. I've seen in any comic, somebody just intentionally pull off their head. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I do <laughs> appreciate in the scene when Prowl jumps through the space portal, landing in front of them. Fort Max is like, get up out of car. Get up and transform and fight me. I'm not fighting a car. <laughs> and he That's kicks the car. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, I I like the, you know, they've Cerebros, Fort Max, and Red Alert have been rehabilitating the, the bots that uh, were taken and forced into the animal forms uh, that Fort Max rescued um, in More Than Meets the Eye volume... 10 i want to say or nine i believe it's nine yeah nine i do like the design of that bot because they're like a uh, is that an antelope antelope or oh yeah yeah i like his the like their design looks pretty cool and uh i thought it was a cool character yep we don't see a lot of them but no yeah. no it's mostly like this is a nod that we're still doing that yeah <laughs> kilo what are your thoughts on outrigger and beak out in the wilderness climbing dead titans I feel like this is a reference to that um, grill bears guy the humans follow. Oh, I thought it could have been a... Yeah, what does he turn into? Is he is he a transformer too? Does he turn into a bear? No, no, he's just he's just a human with a... Oh, okay. I think they, they wanted themselves to sound cool, and so they added bear at the last for their name. Hmm. What a but funny. <laughs> so he's not a bear? No, he's not a bear. He's just a human. No. Oh. He's lying! He's a yeah. Kind of like Bumblebee when he goes gold bug. He's not really a bug, but he's gold. Still, a, uh, just, a, yeah, a but a bear is right? way cooler than a bug. That's true, but it's just it's just for branding purposes. <laughs> branding. All right, we're we're <laughs> falling off topic here. Anyway, Fort Max, Prowl, Red Alert make their way to Sentinel Prime. What is his plans, Computron? What he did was he essentially went into hiding for so long that. He essentially was plotting his entire plan, which was at first to let everybody believe that the Decepticons yoinked his head. And then his second plan or his upbringing was to, on Luna 1, have all these, all these Titans go through a portal to Cybertron and to invade Cybertron with an army of Titans. Because he's a Titan master. Yes. Yeah. Which is scary. Yeah, I think he yeah. says something along the lines he wants to wipe out the Cybertronian race and start over because he doesn't yeah. like the Decepticons and Autobots working together. It's gonna, I feel like it was also a little bit uh, close to Galvatron. Uh, I don't think yes. Galvatron wanted to eliminate the race. He just wanted to eliminate those he just didn't deem right. pure enough, right? So, But this right. was like, we'll just clear everybody off. We'll start again. <laughs> yeah, he's pulling a fascism, which don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Don't Speaking do a fascism. Way, Let's uh, take a quick ad break. Hey, Computron, you look tired. You doing okay? No, just running low on fuel. I really wish there was a small drink that can give me the boost I need to finish the day. There is, and you're in luck. It's called K-Juice, a new exciting Energon drink that will give you the boost that you need to finish the day strong. Here, have one. Thanks, Sonix. <laughs> That hit the spot. Just what I needed. Purchasing K Juice, you agree to the following terms and conditions. K Juice Corp is not responsible for any possible crimson contained inside What's in the box. Or any mischievous gaming plans that may arise Onyx. after consumption. Other side effects may include not moving faster than the brain module while spawning these outbursts, random black What in Primus' name did you give me? And welcome back. In the biggest twist, Red Alert shoots Prowl. Or Spump, Bump, Bump. You know, the guy that was questioning Prowl's loyalty. Interesting. Yeah. At this moment in time, Kilo, what did you think was going on here? I I was like, 
has Red Alert really been working with Sentinel all this time and just been waiting for him to come back? Or is this another case of double agent brainwashing? And I'm like, but if it's brainwashing, it's like, we've seen it before. <laughs> Why is it again? <laughs> kind of thing. I was hoping it was either he's just been waiting all this time and that's kind of why he went crazy because he wasn't sure when sentinel was gonna pop up again or or that that's fair so a skirmish breaks out and what we assume is unconscious prowl fort max and saruri both escape from red alert and sentinel and sovereign and uh they come up with the plan and all the time they're coming up with the plan prowl is complaining he was shot and fort max saying living the dream <laughs> It's just I, so love it. I love it. I love I I think Prowl says like, oh, so that's how it feels like getting <laughs> backstabbed or something. I'm like, yes. Backstabbed or portrayed. It was so yeah. self-aware. So good. But what I really enjoy is we get to see Prowl's table flipping abilities come into play. Yes. It's almost as if the writers are self-aware of this uh, yes. theme. <laughs> <laughs> Except it for was it wasn't a table. Nope. Uh, yeah, but it was, it was something it was, shaped like a table. <laughs> it was a switch shaped like a table. Yeah, it was something to help with the transformation cog to get a giant Fort Max. It's a nod yes. to Fort Mactress being in his original form. And then we get an all out Titan versus Titan battle. What were your thoughts on this scene? Any favorites? It's about time we saw cool. Fort Max as a Titan. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, I like that we got both versions. Uh, a Fort Max, and I thought the Titans might be references to other characters just because they all had different color schemes, but I wasn't quite sure. Uh, but I, I really, really enjoyed this because Fort Max is kind of like um, uh, in Pacific Rim when they like they can move their arms on top of the yeah. inside the cockpit and the Piloted. bot does the same. Yeah, so he's doing the same thing. He's just fighting in a big area and then the Titans doing the same thing. So I thought it was cool as well. It's almost like Fort Max is a Titan master too. Max. We need to go deeper. Yes. <laughs> Titan Master for Fort Max. Funny how they're both deeper. in this comic. Crazy. <laughs> uh, Kilo, why was Red Alert on the Crazy Guys team? Do you mind explaining how he gets himself out of it and then your thoughts on the ending? Yeah, so Red Alert was a sleeper agent for Sentinel because when Sentinel was in power, uh, he had a couple of sleeper agents to help him achieve his goal. And then uh, when he said a specific phrase that the, they would join him in, in battle and, and do his bidding. And uh, Red Alert, through the help of Rong, throughout the, the time they spent on the Lost Light, Rong mentioned to him that there were multiple ways to help uh, with uh, combat brainwashing, if, that's, that, if that was the case, because Red Alert kept thinking that He's always paranoid. He feels like he's a double agent, but he's not sure. And so Rung tried to help him. And uh, he kind of goes into his uh, his memory cortex and creates this interaction with Rum, where he's speaking to himself, trying to uh, awaken his true personality and snap out of it. And he manages to break through that. And uh, he shoots Sentinel Prime uh, in the chest, having him pop up uh, from the body. And then the little bird that we saw before pushes Sentinel Prime down a barrel of one of the Titans. And he's presumed dead. But since I did not see him on the page, <laughs> he might come back. <laughs> it's, it's just kind of a long tunnel. anti-character to Prowl because he's like, how deep is that? And then, you know, Red Alert tells him it's like a mile and a half. And then Prowl's like, oh, yeah, nobody could survive that. I'm like, really, Prowl? You're the guy that kind of <laughs> goes down to the T when it comes to numbers. And you're like, yeah. Good enough. Yeah, he, he, there, Prowl's having like a, a small redemption arc in Sins of the Records where he was struggling to kill Hubcap. So that, that makes sense here. Okay, yeah. true. Yeah. So it's kind of carrying forward. I do like the ending where Red Alert says he's missing the crew on the Lost Light. At least half. A good 10 to 15%. <laughs> and it gets smaller. He's like, okay, a couple of them. It's good. It's good. Yeah, that was so sweet. I found again we we mentioned it, but I found it funny that Prowl went back, took brought Blackrock to Optimus, and then came back. He's like, "Okay, I'm on sabbatical." I'm like, "And nobody arrested you yeah, no <laughs> for no reason." But now they're all uh, they were washing some. I think it was like transformation cogs, and they're all like talking to each other. So that was that was pretty cute. 
That was cute. So, uh, anyone want to tackle what the hidden meaning on the final panel might mean? Wait, what? I tried to uh, decipher it, and all I could find was MTMTE 2012-2016. So I, I don't know if that was, like, the writers saying that More Than Meets the Eye uh, was going to come back uh, during that time frame. I wasn't reading it at the time this, these comics came out, but I'm assuming it was, like, a little Easter egg letting them know that, hey, we're coming back. I, I oh, my gosh, there it is. About it. <laughs> yeah. Is it in Hex? Like, can we... No, there's lit- there's uh in the right in the middle there's the, the oh, letters. TNT, TNT, yeah. Like, oh, oh. yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> whipping out my hex calculator here. <laughs> oh, any final thoughts before we move to Rod Star rating? I found it weird that Blackrock is a robot that's instead of a robot that's also instead of a human kind of thing. Yep. Absolutely. And so he gets his was... memory back when he's called Sovereign. Yeah, it's that's... well. I... Was he another sleeper agent? Is that what the problem was? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, okay. He's a sleeper yeah. within a sleeper within a sleeper. He was a MacGuffin for the last two <laughs> volumes. He was so a sleeper a for Onyx, a sleeper for Sentinel. Who is this man sleeping with? <laughs> I'll be drawing this now. That's going to be edited out. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. You think that and it's staying in. All right, let's start rating. Let's start with Compudron. <laughs> uh, I like Titan Returns. It was a really good, fresh, nice start to season three. It was finally nice to see some Red Alert back, mm-hmm. and uh, I liked I liked seeing Cerberus. I think it was the first time I've ever seen him in the comics. Either first or second. Yeah, time. I think so. So first or second. Yeah. So I'm gonna give this a solid, probably four for just a really good start. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I really like the, the the comic. The art uh, was very good. Uh, seeing new character, or like seeing old characters, but getting more uh, with them uh, was also fun. Kind of having Sentinel pop up after four million years and be like, oh, yeah, I've just been working on this new armor. But then at the same time, since I was trying to fuse with the Titans, I kept knocking myself in and out of consciousness. And so that's why you haven't seen me for so long. Uh, I was a little bit kind of like, oh, I guess, it, you know, it's kind of like they just needed somebody and they, they're like, oh, this is a way we could do that. Kind of yeah. thing, uh, but overall, I think it's like a, a solid like introduction. It's like an okay introduction. So I was gonna uh, for me, it's like a three. Just it's just okay. It's kind of like cool, and that's it. Fair enough. I think I'm gonna agree with Computron though with a four. That is because like the art's gorgeous. What's funny is funny. What's good makes sense. And then there's a few other things that are just like okay. Like the death of Sentinel Prime was anticlimactic. The using Black Rock as the MacGuffin was kind of like repetitive, but yeah. the rest of it I thought was pretty fun. It was almost like they grabbed like the best of the best when it came to like the artists. Sorry, this yes. might sound way too opinionated, but like I really like Livio Ramondale's art style and I like Alex Milne's art style. And they're like, hey, mm-hmm. let's just combine these into one comic. And I really Absolutely. like that. But listeners, what do you think of these? How many Rod Stars would you give it? Let us know by leaving a comment below. Now, if you want to get in contact with us, you can send us an email at swervesbarpodcast at gmail.com. That is S-W-E-R-V-E-S-B-A-R podcast at gmail.com. So, are you two ready for Transformers Till All Are One, Volume 1? I'm ready. Yes. Fantastic. If you've enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing. If you want to help out the show even further, we have started a Patreon. All the proceeds will go to supporting the show and keeping the lights on. Of course, we have some tiers that offer other forms of gratitude such as 3D files, an entry to our Discord channel where you can talk to us live, and you will have early access to our comic review videos a week before their public release, including the the D&D podcast. Also, we have a goal to reach 500 subscribers on our YouTube channel. We'll be holding a brand new kind of giveaway we've never done before so click that subscribe button tell your friends it's a good time just tell your friends as always just tell your friends as always we hope you are all staying safe out there thank you so much for listening we appreciate every single one of you till all are one till Till all are one one. (laughs) (laughs) follow us on facebook and instagram at swerves bar podcast you can also find us on twitter at swerves bar if you are interested in more content, try checking out the spinoff D&D series, Transform Rollout. The first season, Rise of the World Killers, is completely out now. Let us tune in for a preview now.
I deserve the MVP of the night. The MVP? <laughs> I shot myself to get in there. Is that what your MVP wants to be? Yeah. It's like the little Overwatch thing which says, play of the game? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> player of the game, <laughs> and it's Bastion. It's always Bastion. Fascinating. There's also a YouTube channel with bonus content with a link provided below, and if you are so inclined, you can support us on Patreon, where you can get even more bonus content, such as several 3D files and access to their Discord. Links will be provided below. And transmission.